Ready? Yep. Pass tech. Well, that's I did good. it all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at today? Oh, we're at Edgewater today for another test and tune. We're going to be testing the car on E85 for the first time. I'm hoping it's going to go a little faster, but we're kind of chasing an issue. It doesn't like to rev past 6,000, which I know I'm seeing a million comments saying like she's shifting it way too early. I know I don't want to be shifting it that early. And if it is what it is. Right now we believe it's the uh, valve springs that's stopping it from revving so high. It just, it's like it goes into valve float or something. So we have a valve train issue. So we can't shift it past like six grand yet, but. Tommy put a fresh set of plugs in before we left too, so. We'll be able to get a good reading as where the timing is and a fresh start on E85, so. And then we're gonna have to get another set too for when we start spraying it, but as for now, or for now, this will be good. Yeah, we'll make a couple passes today. Hopefully it makes new personal best. It should. Money. What, what do you think it'll run? Um. I don't know. 1250? Really you think it'll it. get in the 50s? 50? Two tenths. All right. So when my dad was here last, it went a 1265. So I guess it's possible. It should at least pick up a tenth and a half or two tenths, I would think. But we'll see. The elevation's really good here. Yeah. No, this is the fastest track in Ohio or one of, so. <sighs> All right. All right. Let's do it. Well, yep. All right. So first things first tonight we're going to try and make some motor hits on this thing it's the first time the darts ever been to Edgewater on E85 the atmosphere usually here is really good it's a high barometer track meaning the altitudes fairly low uh, generally we're a little bit fast down here compared to up home especially dragway 42 uh, we're just going to try and shake it down and make sure that the tune-up on the carburetor's right is a little bit smaller than the engine I had in my Malibu the carburetor was tuned for the 355. This is a 340. However, this engine is a little bit more mild with the cam and compression than my old 355 was. So that may mean we need to jet it up just a little. We'll see what the mile an hour is after the first pass. We'll go from there. Maybe take a plug reading to see what it does. Then we can work on, you know, maybe turn nitrous on at a later date. We don't have it wired up tonight. And to be honest with you, the fuel pump, we did a test on it today and it barely pumped what about a gallon a minute barely a little over a gallon a minute, just a little yeah maybe so we're not really uh, set up to spray it tonight the fuel system's going to need to upgrade it probably a standalone so let's just try and figure out where we're at on motor on ethanol and we'll go from there well you know your best motor tune-up is going to be your best nitrous tune-up yes so yes that's your best starting point yep so we need to get this thing to run as fast as we can get it to go on motor first and then we can work on turn the spray on maybe next weekend or something depends on the weather let's do it let's do it well well uh what do you think of the dart we haven't gotten your reaction yet or it's awesome it's awesome are you a mopar fan i like anything yeah, yeah. it's gonna be good Are you flustered? And you can't chipmunk me. That's Oh, but I can. We use the same website for no, sound effects. No, no, you're not gonna do that.
decent light for me, especially for the first one. I'm moving in the right direction when it comes to light. What was it? I can't see it. Right here. 0.04. What? I can't believe it. Because I felt like I was late. Well, it's a 60 foot. It must react a little quicker now. Best 60 foot ever, 1.78. We're back in the sevens for eighth miles. There you go. So did it. It did help a lot. And that was the personal best. Uh, what, 1260 at 107. Best mile an hour. But I feel like we need to pull a plug, see where it's at, uh -huh. see where the timing's at, see if it's rich between. So. My light didn't suck that bad for my first one out. It's not great, but it's not that bad. So 1260 at 107. Yeah. Okay. What did you launch at? Uh, 2022. 22? Yeah. You might try lowering it down a little bit, letting it get a little run at the converter. Okay. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and change the ignition timing and just see if it picks up or slows down. Okay. Make one change at a time. You want to pull a plug? Yeah. Okay. So, we're going to find out whether my gut feeling was right on the street the other night when I tested it. Because it was initially at 40 degrees, was, that's where her dad had it set. And I turned it up to 45 and I felt like it was better, but we're going to find out. So I went ahead and put it back to 40, we'll see if it picks up or if it slows down. If it slows down, then we know to go back maybe 46. That's a lot of timing, but I'm not really... I've never really worked on too many 340 Dodges, so we'll see what it likes. I mean, the thing of it is, is 45 may not necessarily be 45 on that balancer. So it's just a number. You just need to see what it wants. Because it, it may not actually have 45 degrees in it if the balancer or the timing pointer's off. I don't know if it's ever been indexed properly. So we're just gonna see what it likes and go from there. Put a fresh, put a fresh plug in that hole, and I want to compare them after we make a lick. I only have one set of plugs, so there's not a whole nother set laying back here. No. Because the timing mark looks about perfect. Maybe, well, it's a little hot. See where the timing marks clear back here on the strap? Mm -hmm. That's a little too much timing. So my gut instinct was right. Turn the timing back just a little bit. I mean, what you feel in a car going up the road necessarily isn't what the engine wants. But that looks to me like it's got a bit too much timing in it. So, to try again. Chipping away at it. <laughs> All right. The biggest thing I noticed, the car is so 
so much more responsive. Yeah. responsive. Yeah. It is not hard to red light now. No. At no. all. Remember what I told you about those accelerator pumps, that carburetor set up the way it is? I was doing that to get it to 60 foot really good with Malibu to get the that light. Because I was struggling just like you were. And I got it. But, and I think, I, I heard you leave a little bit lower RPM and it flashed the converter really hard and it left a lot better. Yeah, it left at about 1700. Yeah, that's what I thought. What, so good. what was the 60, but it had to have been better. better. 176. Wow, uh, there you go. How about to the eight? Uh, 794. Wow, it lost four hundredths, or no, five hundredths to the eighth. Yeah. Um, what was the mile an hour at the quarter? 107, so the same as last time. Okay, so when it goes through the traps, do you feel it kind of laying down? Or I can definitely tell it's it's getting there. It's getting not, there. Not quite, but it, it's getting there. Yeah. I think what we're fighting is the valve springs aren't stiff enough, and it's going into valve float as it gets down there close to the finish line. Let's pull some plugs and see what the plugs look like real quick. So you can definitely see a timing mark on the strap right there, and that's about where it needs to be. So the, the timing looks pretty decent, but to me, that looks pretty lean. So let's jet it up a little bit and see what it does. Remember what I said earlier? I said it looks like it's overtimed and lean. Yeah. It's overtimed and lean. It was. So it had 85s in it. I'm going to 87s in the front. I'm going to jet the back up two numbers too and just see if the mile an hour picks up. So we turned the timing down five degrees and launched it at a different RPM. I think most of that ET pickup was from her launching at a lower RPM, but taking timing away from it didn't hurt it. The mile an hour was the same. So that's a good sign. That tells me we didn't we didn't make the wrong decision in taking timing out of it because the plug showed a little too much timing. So I think the main thing we're fighting is it's a little bit lean going down track, and I think the valve springs are another issue. It's so fun, like having something, no offense, slower, so that you can just keep chipping away at time slips. Like, yeah, this is pretty fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> I didn't think it would go 12:52. I mean, that's what I guessed. I don't know I if know we'll be able did. to get into the four 12:40s. Oh, that'd but be awesome. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. What I'm, what I'm looking at here is we upped the jet in the carburetor, which I'm looking for an increase in mile an hour. 
and if you look at this, it's 107.42, 107.63. So at the surface, that don't look like nothing, right? But here's the story. 176.7, 60 foot, 178.4. And it looked like she bumped in there a little bit deep to me. So deep stage in the car, slowed to 60 foot down, probably three or four hundreds. But look here. 511 to a 513, 7945, 7949. So the jet is actually picking the car up. The ET is the, the ET would have been much faster had the car been staged at the same place. The 60 foot is slow, the 330 is slow because she deep staged it. But if you look at the ET, the ET's picking up 10419, 1041 8. So she's She's almost three slow in the 60, but she's the same at the 1,000. And she still went one faster. So that pass would have been about four or five hundreds faster than that 51. That would have been a 40 pass, probably a 47, and probably 108 miles an hour. So the Jets did help it. It's just when she bumped in, she bumped in a little deep, and that slowed the ET down. But we're going in the right direction. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So the timing mark is right where I'd like it, but I still don't see any fuel on it. And this is why E85 is so hard to tune without an air fuel ratio monitor. Uh, the only thing you can really do is throw jet at it until it slows down because it'll hardly show anything on the plug. So I think the jetting is still probably a little bit lean. Uh, but based on the ET and the mile an hour that I see on the time slip, I think it's all right. It's just, the problem we're going to get into now is with the valve float. The quicker I make the car get to the 330 and the quicker I get the car to go to the 8th, the earlier it's going to hit valve float in high gear and then slow it down on the back side. Does it break up any at all going down the track? No, Nothing? Okay. Because the other thing I'm thinking right now is that as I throw more jet to the carburetor, if we're running out of fuel because of the fuel pump, the more, the more jet I put to it, it's just going to run out of fuel earlier in the run, and it's not going to really show much. Did you shift it higher that time, too? Yeah, it was 15 at that time. So, knowing that... shifted it higher that may have picked the car up more than the jetting mm -hmm. I just I really don't see anything showing up on the plug like it should be and I almost feel like the, the pumps not keeping up with it keeping it fit but the shifting it higher probably picked the car up more than the jetting did let's just go up and make another one just the way it is and try to be real careful bumping it in just try to bump it in because I remember this the 52 pass you flickered the bulb, I think. It was one of those passes. I remember watching the car go in, and you flickered the bulb. So, it, so the car was in there perfect, but that last one, it looked like you kind of, you kind of took a big bump in. So just try to, try to focus on real fast bunny hop bumps. You flicker the bulb going in. You probably don't have to bring it up as high either to get to so right. you can, so it doesn't jump away from you. Yeah. you know? It's all right. It's all seat time.
different was I left at a lower, yeah. Like, your dad's How low did you leave? 1500. He said you could basically leave it idle. So. Did it slow the 60 foot down? Uh, 60 foot was 178, so that's about right. Yeah, uh, I don't know. In the eighth mile, it was uh, 796. It was down a mile, or it went 106, and it's been going 107 all day. So. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, we'll see what Dad says. I don't think I did anything else different. Just left at a lower RPM. I left at a lower RPM. Right? Left at a lower oh, RPM. This one. This one. I didn't change the 60 foot though. It just it was slower to the 330 for some reason. The only, that's the only thing that I changed. Okay. So it just tells us that's the threshold, like it doesn't like it that low. Mm -hmm. It likes to flash the converter, but it doesn't like to be flashed that low. Because it lost mile an hour through the whole run. It's all right, we're learning. drive your own car better than me. <laughs> you had a better burnout than I did too. <laughs> you can't hear anyone. It's terrible when, it, when you're in a quiet car and you have a helmet on, you can't hear anything. That's probably the... Trust me, I know. <laughs> that's probably the most uncomfortable part for me is I couldn't hear the car. Just because when you're in a quiet car like this, you get full exhaust, you put your helmet on. It's hard to, your senses are really numb. Yeah. But you could definitely like, every time I shifted it, it like fell on its face and then picked back up and I don't know. Was, I don't know if that's a valve float issue or you know like we said a thousand times a fuel pump, but something's not right. But it's time for upgrades. Yay! I think, had we not be having valve float issues right now, I think the E85 would have showed a lot more on the time slips. 
I wouldn't totally like, like I know we were expecting it to be a lot more faster, but I, I think uh, once we get some of these things upgraded, it's gonna be a lot faster. I mean, it's losing a lot of power every shift. It's just like bogging and it's terrible. I wish I could explain to you guys more what I feel or like know, but it's I really still have hard. no frame of reference either. Well, and the other thing is, it's really hard to hear in that car. It's all by feel, like yeah. you can feel it lay over, but you can't hear it. It's really quiet. So.